Hi, my name is Jonas, and this is my robot Wild Willy, which I used in the Danish Robocop competition last year. While I did manage to get it to run on the track, it had one big problem, and that is the motors. I used these small N20 motors, and I burned a lot of them during the competition. So this year I wanted to put in some new and larger motors, and I ended up having to redesign the entire robot because I couldn't fit the larger motors in the old design, and I didn't want the robot to be any bigger. So this is my robot for this year's competition. It looks pretty much the same as the old one, but everything inside has changed in order to get enough space to put in the new motors. And then of course it has gotten this device on top. Um, I'll get back to that in a moment. During the competition I always get a lot of questions about what's inside my robot, so I thought I will just take this one a bit apart and show you what's inside. If we start by looking at the front, I have two cameras. The top one is a normal RGB camera, and the bottom one is a time-of-flight camera for measuring distances. In the back I have a display, and below that that's a servo for this arm. And on the top this is a button for starting the robot. Inside the robot below these covers I have the motors of course, and uh, electronics for controlling the robot. So this wheel is controlled by these two motors, the other wheel in front is by these two, and then these two are for the backmost wheel. Below this top cover is a Raspberry Pi, this is a Pi 4. And below that one, you can see the electronics controlling uh, the motors. This is uh, six drivers for each motor. Uh, and all encoder signals from the motors are running into this Raspberry Pi Pico. It controls the speed and the angle of all motors, and it receives high-level commands from, from the Raspberry Pi on top. So, as you can see, there's really not much space left inside the robot. And one of the things I really used a long time figuring out when I designed this robot was how to make the battery replaceable, so I can take it out when I need to charge it. So I ended up with this front cover that lifts off, uh, and in here I have the battery, so I can take it out and, and recharge it. Every part of the robot, all these bits, are covered with uh, magnets in the corners, and that makes attaching every part uh, really simple, so it's really simple to put together. And it really has a satisfying uh, sound when you uh, attach things. One of the obstacles on the track is to pick up a golf ball. And that is what this device is for. The idea is that you lower it down and then the arm on the side will be able to grab the ball and pick it up. Maybe you notice that the side arms also has a bike in the end. And this is for another obstacle on the track. The obstacle is these cards with QR codes on them. Each one has a different number and you have to separate the cards and put them in front of the house with the same number. It turns out that separating these is actually not that easy. They are attached by magnets. One thing I considered was just to try to grab onto the first one and then move it fast, but the other ones then uh, tend to move. So I did the uh, various tests and found out that the best way to separate the first card from the last one without moving the last one is to pick it up in the wheels and lift it upwards. This way uh, the card almost doesn't move. The idea is to put the robot in front of the cart, then let the arm go down in between, and then the spikes will go in and grab into the wheels. And once I have grabbed the wheels, I can lift it up without moving uh, the other carriages. Or at least that's the idea. As you may have noticed in the video, I have not uh, powered anything and I know that everything, each component is working, I have tested everything, but I have not made the software call controlling everything together. So that's what I will use uh, the next weeks for before the competition. 